Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, and I'm your host for the Las Vegas Real Estate Show. Thanks for tuning in. We're on each and every week, and we provide to you some information about whether you want to buy or sell. And if you do want to buy or sell, how are you going to determine what is the best deal in town? Obviously, you want to buy that best deal, but there is a lot of competition. So there's a good number of things that you need to know before you begin any of this stuff. And if you're a seasoned professional, somebody who's been doing this a long time, somebody who's looked and found and ferreted out great opportunities, uh, well, we can supply you with uh, additional people that that you can talk to both in the real estate world, in the financing world, and a number of other areas. The areas to invest in Las Vegas. Okay, so let's get specific just a little bit about some of the areas in town where investment is still a good idea. Anything around UNLV, why? Because you have students that need housing. So if you're looking for a particular four unit, two unit, five unit building around that area, it's still a pretty good deal. Now, there are some rougher areas in town which do not compare to, let's say, you're down in the southwest or you're up in the Summerlin area where rents are pretty good, but yet you're far away from where you might find a, a number of buyers or a number of uh, renters that want to rent properties. So there's this trade-off between the, the areas that aren't as rough versus the areas that are as rough. And if you're looking for one versus the other, if you're looking for a return on your investment or you're looking for a long-term tenant who can protect the property while giving you some positive cash flow, these are some of the things you need to obviously understand. So the areas in town where you go are extremely important. Downtown is a terrific area. However, it's been picked over. There are a number of... Uh, investors that I've talked to and a number of people I know who have bought down there who have turned their properties and who are now selling their properties. Uh, there's a whole redevelopment going on downtown which is going to take a few years but it's going to drive a lot of the property values up. Uh, there are people who are buying obviously tearing down and rebuilding. There are people who are buying and renovating and holding and of course uh, as a friend of mine was telling me earlier in the, today that they bought, they held on to it for about six months, didn't do a lot to the property but the property went up over $100,000 now that's pretty good investment money to make in a very short time uh, and that's one of the areas of town uh, that I think is still a pretty good value. Uh, the areas of investment, whether you're going to be in commercial or residential, these are things to understand. Uh, we've had on the show several times experts in that field uh, who talk about the commercial aspect of real estate here in town. Commercial is owned by a uh, very few number of people and the turnover, uh, the cap rates, uh, the number of things that you need to understand about commercial is different than residential. Residential is pretty simple. You buy a property at a price, you figure out what your principal interest taxes and insurance are, you slap on some additional... Um, they're calling the show now. Unbelievable. So uh, if you're in that, uh, that's very important for you to understand exactly what's going on in the marketplace and where the best investment, whether it's be commercial or residential. Uh, for the flip or the um, uh, rental properties, this goes along with what I'm just saying. So if you're looking to flip a property, buying low, selling high, obviously really important. And the new rules for the buy and hold, look, if you're buying and thinking you're going to sell that property without capital gains in two years, it's not going to happen. The new rule is four years just got passed this year and so if you are out there right now and you have a property and you've just bought it and you're thinking of selling it within the two year period, be, understand that the capital gains is an important part of your sales decision. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. I'm Jeff Barton. I'm your voice and your host for the Las Vegas Real Estate Show and we'll be right back. Want to know how to create more business and save money? Simple. The answer is video. Video shares are the fastest growing form of word of mouth advertising. And according to internetretailer.com, visitors who viewed a business video were 85% more likely to buy after watching it. People today are on the go. They don't have time to read text, but they have one minute to watch video. At HD Video King, we not only create quality video that's right for you, we coach you on how to get the most from it. Call today. Our award-winning staff are ready to assist.
Successful Strategies International offers state-of-the-art PMP certification in an entire curriculum of project management, risk management, portfolio and program management by using unique learning techniques such as online learning, simulations, and facilitator lead programs. Our clientele consists of some of the biggest Fortune 500 companies in existence. SSI has trainers all across North America, Europe, and Asia to help meet your project management needs. Learn more at SSI-Learn.com. That's SSI-Learn.com. Com. Ruthless Cowboys, keeping the American dream alive and creating jobs one t-shirt at a time. From fabric to design, Ruthless Cowboys makes 100% American-made apparel that hard-working Americans are proud to wear. At RuthlessCowboys.com, you can shop for shirts and accessories for the cowboy or cowgirl in your life. Head to RuthlessCowboys.com, check us out on Facebook and Instagram by searching Ruthless Cowboys. Ruthless Cowboys, we're all about family, country, and keeping it all American. RuthlessCowboys.com. Are you experiencing hair loss? We have the solution with no drugs, no surgery, and no side effects. Experience 100% pain-free results with Super Grow Laser Cap System, featuring 272 professional-grade lasers that make your hair thicker and fuller naturally. Use it 15 minutes a day, three times a week, and notice your hair growth in as little as three months. Visit online at iRevivelaser.com to order your Super Grow Laser Cap today and experience unbelievable results. I revive laser.com. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, and I'm your host for the Las Vegas Real Estate Show, and we're on each and every week. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we try to bring to you some information about what's going on here in Las Vegas, as well as the surrounding neighborhoods, towns, valley. Real estate is hot, as everybody knows, and how you take advantage of that, well, that's what we try to do on the show. And we'll bring guests from time to time, we'll talk about the market, we'll bring people who will talk about school systems, the politicians, what's happening that can affect both prices and market conditions, which of course affect your bottom line directly. Um, today we're bringing to the show a guest that's been on before, and I really appreciate it because he's got some great give back situations and things that he's trying to do for the community, the homeless, for kids. And uh, of course, it's Chris McLemore from uh, Tuck and Run. Chris, how are you? I'm doing great, Jeff. How are you doing today? I'm just fine. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you for having me on, by the way. No, and thanks for coming back on uh, Tuck and Run. Tell us a little bit about that so we can, uh, you know, just get people familiar with what you're doing. By all means. Tuck and Run is a nonprofit organization that uh, I created. It was based on a legacy that initially started from my parents. Uh, my parents was in the restaurant business, uh, barbecue restaurant business, for over 30 years. What's the name of the place? Uh, Uncle Ben's Barbecue. Absolutely. And, uh, yep. What made them and their legacy unique was they used to feed the homeless. Right. And they did that for over 30 years. And one of the things that I always wanted to do is I wanted to not only just give back to the community, but I also wanted to keep my father and my parents' legacy on. And it wasn't, the, the, the product itself is the legacy, but to me, the legacy is also what they did in the community right. and giving back to the homeless. So uh, we're putting together this plant. We're working on a plant to put together, whereas the meat plant will be the meat packing plant, and that's where we'll produce all the product there. It's pre-packaged for restaurants, right? It's Isn't pre, that what you do? It's pre-packaged barbecue right. for the restaurants. Right. right. So we're gonna the target market obviously is gonna be uh, all the bars and restaurants and taverns and, and so and then eventually take that to be phase one, then we'll eventually start looking at the hotel industry and then that'll be phase two, and then we'll probably look since it's a pre-packaged and everything is USDA approved. So one of the things that needs to take place at the plant, which will be the licensing for the USDA. And if anybody ever done any business with USDA, you know that that licensing is very strict and the way they, how, how your plant needs to be designed, uh, they, they, you know, very critical how that's done. But the good thing about that is, as we feed the homeless and as we cater back to the, to the, the community, we know that every product is USDA approved, and that's important. You know, your legacy in town, obviously you've been uh, doing this a long time, raised by your folks. Uh, I, read, I read a lot on your website. It, it's a great story, and it's a great give back situation for Thank you. that. Continuing that and trying to bring that to the next generation is important. What is the. Um, uh, I guess the short-term goal of what you're trying to do, and like in the next six months, a year, because I know eventually you want to obviously bring this to restaurants beyond just what you're doing now, and maybe get into the stadium where you where you want to want. Uh, that, that's that correct. So when you mention the stadium, so uh, you know it, the, the whole idea of Tuck and Run, it will go into phases, and as I mentioned, the legacy. But what's going to be so important is 
that we're able to initially start working with the homeless and in the bars. The bars is, being it's a prepackaged rib, we'll be able to supply them right away. Okay. okay. So that's, that's phase one, as I mentioned, and that's going to be very important in that phase because what that does is I use my, my Tuck and Run, which is a nonprofit, but also I'm working on right now, and we're looking at maybe to have this plant up and running by December because we're putting together a plan uh, in December to feed close to two or 300 homeless people. And that's around Christmas time. And that was one of the biggest times of the year my parents used to do this. So I felt to kick it off during Christmas like they used to kick it off during Christmas. You know, and a lot of times when we were kids, everybody was opening up their gifts. So right. we had to open up our gifts after in the evening because my parents was like, hey, this is the gift. The gift is to go and, and to give back. And then when we get back home, you guys can open up your gifts. So we, at the time, you, you didn't understand that. But now That's that I'm right. an adult, I look at that and I'm like, wow, you know, I almost wish I would have kind of showed that to my kids, you know. Right. But uh, so we're looking to kick this the first feeding of the homeless around December, December 20th. Matter of fact, on December Christmas, December 25th. And we're looking to do uh, a breakfast. Because my parents used to, because so many people are, are doing dinners and stuff. So we're looking to do a breakfast, a big breakfast during that time. The plant should be open, and we should be up and running and doing the things that we need to do for Tuck and Run. And Tuck and Run will be the marketing company. So they will market all the product. And then we'll have a for-profit company, which actually would do all the packaging and all the producing in the plant. Excellent. Yeah. When do you think? December 29th? December. December 25th. 20, of course. Yeah, Why did I say 29th? Because I was thinking New Year's. <laughs> yeah, no, December 25th is the target, target day, target market. Uh, that's the day that we plan on uh, initially kicking this off. Okay, now why, why this? Why now? Is it more about your parents and trying to give back? Because I think that the legacy of what your, your dad did and your mom did in the store originally is an unbelievable story. And then to try to bring that forward. Is it more about that or is it more about giving back to... I, I, town and, I, I and think it's a combination home. of both. Now, I didn't mention that I'm, I'm a, 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 a ex alumni football player. I, put, I used to play for the Raiders. So, being a Raider and being a, a professional, ex professional football player, alumni, one of the things you always want to do is you want to be able to give back to the community. Uh, we and Tuck and Run was involved with uh, uh, what they call a, a mini youth football camp, and that was in August. And we, what we do is we train kids, talk kids, teach kids how to be in stage Where was school. That? This was at the All American Park. Okay. So it was at the All American Park right here on Buffalo. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and, and, and it was really ironic because it's, it's so good to be able to, you see these kids' faces and you see, they see an ex football player, they see something that they want to be, uh, maybe moving forward. Right. And when I was a kid, you know, and I grew up here in Vegas, and that's the other thing, being growing up here in Vegas, okay. we didn't have that kind of, I didn't have that kind of opportunity where we had a whole bunch of professional athletes come and they'd talk. I would have loved that, being able to talk to a professional athlete because that was my dream, that was my goal, that maybe one day reach that, that kind of uh, accolade in my life. So being able to do that, so it's not just giving back to the community, it's also giving back to the community and building up the community. And who, what else to start building up is start building up our youth. So you build from the ground up. You build a young generation that's going to be our future one day. So you start building them up, and it's not just in football, because football is just an, an avenue to be able to be disciplined, to right. be able to be structured, to be able to make a, have a goal and reach those goals. And that's what, as adults, that's what we do in the business world. That's what we do as adults. We have goals, and we obtain those goals by hard work, discipline, and, right. and education. Because, you know, without education, it's not possible. I always tell my, the youth, and I always tell my kids, if you're not reading two or three books a day, you're not doing anything. So right. try your best to read as much as you possibly can because that's what education is at. You know, in the give back, in what you're doing, um, the Raiders coming to town, do you think it um, uh, really helps the community be a community to have a sports team, whether it's the Golden Knights or whether it's the Raiders or whether it's any other nationally recognized sports team to give pride to the community? Do you think that's a, a help? Do you think having the Raiders here is going to be a good thing? I think it's going to be a great thing because what happens is, and, and the, the, the hockey team, the Knights, kind of showed us an example of really what's going to take place here when the Raiders get here. That, the way the community pulled together and supported 
And I don't know anything about hockey, Jeff. I'm just, be honest, I'm just gonna be honest with you. So I'm sitting there, you know, watching this hockey game, you know, and I, and I haven't had a chance to go to the game. Actually, I had tickets one day, but I had to fly out of town. But so I'm watching the game on TV. I don't know nothing about hockey, and I'm just rooting. Because hey, they're from Vegas. Vegas team. This is a yeah. Vegas team. So and now you you have the the Oakland Raiders, which will now be the Las Vegas Raiders coming to Las Vegas. I can see it's just going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing how the community pulls together and root for this team to excel and do well. And that's just, that's just awesome. That is awesome. A lot of people say you come to Vegas to have a good time, you know, and that's true. But that's just part of it. Now, you don't realize how many people that really actually grew up and live here in Vegas. And it feels that this is such a home for them, just like in all the other states where they have uh, football franchises. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think what happens when people come here is they forget that this is home to exactly. a lot of people. This is two and a half million people. In That's exactly city. right. You know, That's they're exactly not just right. coming and going. Forty million people come and go, <laughs> but two and a half million people stay here. That's exactly right, Jeff. That's Excellent. exactly right. It's, Vegas is growing, and it is it is a man. It's just, I think, and you're talking about the real estate. Real estate, what I'm seeing in that market is just, it's tight. It's yeah. really, it's going up the roof, hit, hit the roof here. So um, I think the, with the Raiders coming to town, that's only helping the real estate market. If someone wanted to donate, if someone wanted to get involved, how would they do that? They would go to www.tuckandrun.org and just go right on my website and you can hit the donation button and just donate. That would be awesome. Thanks very much, Chris. Appreciate you coming on the show. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Thank I appreciate you too. it. Thank you, too. And I'm Jeff Barton. I'm your host for the Las Vegas Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. Successful Strategies International offers state-of-the-art PMP certification in an entire curriculum of project management, risk management, portfolio and program management by using unique learning techniques such as online learning, simulations, and facilitator lead programs. Our clientele consists of some of the biggest Fortune 500 companies in existence. SSI has trainers all across North America, Europe, and Asia to help meet your project management needs. Learn more at SSI-Learn.com. That's ssi learn Com. Want to know how to create more business and save money? Simple. The answer is video. Video shares are the fastest growing form of word of mouth advertising. And according to internetretailer.com, visitors who viewed a business video were 85% more likely to buy after watching it. People today are on the go. They don't have time to read text, but they have one minute to watch video. At HD Video King, we not only create quality video that's right for you, we coach you on how to get the most from it. Call today. Our award-winning staff are ready to assist. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your host for the Las Vegas Real Estate Show. Thanks for tuning in, and thanks for tuning in each and every week. Uh, we bring to you information, information that we hope you can use in your buying or selling real estate. Look, if you want to invest here, if you want to live here, if you just want to come and visit and rent in a nice place, anything you need to do about real estate and the things you need to have information about, uh, we try to provide on this show. A lot of it is not necessarily mm, tangentially maybe, but not necessarily directly involved with what goes on in real estate. Politics, for instance. Uh, what happens in... Uh, Washington, D.C. can affect your real estate market. Why? Because HUD is a federal program and HUD loans are plentiful here in Las Vegas. Uh, also in the local, whether it's the governor or your local congressperson or the state senator or the local assembly person or the mayor here in Las Vegas, there's all things political that can affect what you want to do in real estate, and so we bring our political expert, ex-candidate, back to the show, Steve Schiffman. Steve, how are you? How are you, Jeff? Not bad. Did you like that intro? It's passable. <laughs> okay. Will it get voters? I don't know. I don't know either. Um, but I'm glad to be back. The, thank you. The political scene here in town, I asked you to t think a little bit about the sure. governor's race. Explain sure. what is happening with the governor's race, uh, and for those that really don't know um, who's involved with it and how, how that's going. <laughs> with all the money being spent for television ads, if they don't know, somebody's doing the job wrong. It's Republican mainly and the Democrat and some independents as well. Uh, it's, it's kind of a nasty fight. It's the, what you, some would say the ultra-conservative versus the uh, ultra-liberal. Uh, money and taxes versus rule of law and law and order, that type of contest. Uh, it depends on what you are. And as a result, you're seeing a lot of advertising that's negative. 
Right. Well, that's typical in any political campaign, especially at the state level. Uh, we're talking about two candidates here which have gone further to the right and further to the left. Why is that? We don't have a centrist candidate. It depends on, on your perspective. Uh, so, for example, if you believe in having somebody who's a moderate, and, and it's not governable, if you look at the senator's race, for example, that Jackie Rosen is advertising like a Republican, even though she's a Democrat, because she mm -hmm. sees that. Uh, when you watch the Dean Heller, he's more of a moderate than a Trumpster, if you will. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, it's the core constituency who's going to vote. And remember, uh, in the state of Nevada, it's been many years since they've had a Democratic governor. Right. How many years is that? What, 10, 12 years? That's or right. more? Quite a lot. Right. And there has to be a reason for it. How, how come the, the current governor is not really um, endorsing anybody? It's, it's odd, isn't it, that the outgoing governor is not I endorsing so, the... But where would he fit? Well, I don't know. He's the only one in the middle. Well, right. <laughs> exactly. exactly why he's a popular governor. And it may be that he's trying to uh, become maybe for the president later on. I know he was being considered for the Supreme Court and things of that sort. Uh, he's not your typical Republican or Democrat in this state, so it seems. Right. He's actually what people should be. Middle of the road pragmatists. Okay. So describe and name the two candidates running for governor. Loxall and uh, Sislak. The Democratic candidate, he's on the uh, Clark County Commission, he's chairman, and he has the impression of spending money. He's pleasing taxes, increases, and one of the ads says, have him saying the word property tax, raising mm -hmm. property tax, which is a no-no out here right. because they're capped. On the other hand, on the Republican side, you'll hear negative concepts saying uh, that he was against women's rights, he was against this, against that and they want to cut back on, on protections. Uh, so in terms of, for example, the Democratic side, I would say they're, he's probably more pro-labor union. Now, why mm -hmm. do I say that? He was one of the few people, I suppose, that supported uh, public money going to the Raiders Stadium, millions right. of dollars. And he's saying that was a good deal because it'll get jobs. Not jobs for the average person, but for the unions. I'm mm -hmm. sure there's an agreement there. Uh, at the same time, Clark County has a lot of expensive uh, taxes here and a lot of uh, fees. That, you know, and water, for example, the, that he, as part of being a commissioner, is also uh, a member of what they call the Water District uh, Organization. So even though they say it's nonprofit, it's the same person or people who do it. And water here is expensive, so it's, you don't hear consumer friends. Really now, don't. we had uh, Gil Garcetti in town recently, Mayor of Los Angeles, coming out stumping for the uh, candidate out here. Um, do you find that any of that is helpful when you get either a celebrity endorsement or other politicians? For instance, Trump will be in and has been in uh, Las Vegas stumping himself for the Republican candidates. It's important for donors. However, it's like preaching to the converted, mm -hmm. to the choir. Those who are impressed by such a person are already going to vote for him. So what's the advantage? I don't think it helps going to the undecided, right. personally. And do you think this governor's race will be decided by the undecided? I'm well, going to go on record now, all right? I'm going to give a gamble. Okay. I think it'll be, with maybe one exception on one congressperson's, it's going to be all Republican. They're going to take it all. I really do. Okay. Be it for uh, uh, governor, senator, senator. And, and our representative. As a matter of fact, you didn't ask this, uh, Oscar Goodman, right? Right. He endorsed uh, Loxholt. He did. He didn't endorse anybody else in any of the political races. His wife, who is mayor of Cannot, Las Vegas. She said she wouldn't, right? Because she's officially nonpartisan. Now, obviously, you have to ask yourself, why did Goodman nominate or uh, support the Republican? Right. Uh, maybe it's because there are things that he doesn't want to tell us about on the Democratic side. Well, why? So I think that endorsement will help. Really will. Yeah, well, he was a popular mayor. Uh, very popular. Yeah. And he also has the ins and outs with the uh, gambling people, the gaming people. I hate the expression, the mob lawyer, because that's, that, that's wrong. Well, that's probably how he made his money, though. Right. Uh, so he has a lot of deep pocket connections. And I believe that his, even though he's, he's getting old and, and maybe his health isn't as good as it could be, his influence is probably there on now, the state level. We, we talk a lot about taxes, right? And, and you're, you're not a great believer in public funding of sports stadiums, which is... <clears throat> or convention halls or anything like that, right. not the private sector. Or I'll rephrase it, having lived in Orlando, which the issue was the same, who benefits from these, the local residents or the tourists? If the tourists come, why should our public money pay for it? Well, that's a good point. Why should the tourists pay for it? It's the conventioneers who come here. 
No, no, I understand. But if you want more convention business and another city is competing and it's less expensive, wouldn't you not, quite necessarily not come here? I mean, you come here because it's in the interest of the company holding the convention. They like the climate. Perhaps they like the gambling. Uh, they like the entertainment. I happen to think that Las Vegas is unique in certain ways. It can't compete against California in, in certain entertainment and gambling, that's for sure. So you know that many Californians will come here, whether they advertise or promote it anyway, right? Well, it, and this brings it up too. Um, there is concern mm -hmm. that because there's now sports gambling mm -hmm. on games in New Jersey, that that will spread to other states. California being one that it could spread to because of the revenue that it could drive uh, to California. So what happens to Las Vegas and the draw to bring people here to bet on sports gambling uh, if, in fact, they can do that back in California? Is there a problem if there's too many taxes here on incoming people, whether it's on your rent a car or on your hotel bill or any number of other taxes that are... If you're a gambler and you like the environment, you're going to come here. Or if you're really a big-time gambler, you call the phone and have someone make the bet for you. So I'm not sure that's really necessary. And remember, a lot of the tourists are the foreign tourists. The international tourists. Well, there's no question. And they come here one time or twice, and that's it. That's all you need. It's not like a person coming over and over and over again. It's like Disney World. How many times can you go to Disney World unless you have children? Well, that's true. All of that is what you're saying is true. Mm -hmm. I'm just putting out the question. Sure. Is there a concern, either with, with you personally or in the political sphere, that maybe we should back off on the taxes to see if we can attract more people and uh, I'll answer, cut back on spending? Remember the expression, the proof is in the pudding? Yes. Right? Well, when they passed the financing for the Raiders, they raised the hotel tax. Yes, they did. That's my so, point. Well, if they thought they were effective, why would they have done it? Well, because sports gambling wasn't legal yet in other states. They thought it might be, but it room wasn't tax? quite sure. Why in the room tax? Well, this because anybody coming here would possibly not want to come here if it was more expensive than going to, say, Orlando. No. 80,000 people are expected every game for the Raiders when they're here. They have to stay at some place. Well, if it's out of town, and is that what they're saying? They're going to be more do, out of do you town think, people do you seeing think, the Raiders? Do you think that the Raiders are going to have their support by local population only? Yes. 80,000 people? Yes. No way. no way. Well, one of the things about NFL, and maybe mm -hmm. it's true here and will be true here, attendance is down. It's down at a lot of outdoor sporting events, whether it be football or baseball or any number of other Event. But this is a weekend destination for people in California. No, no, I, I understand what you're saying. I'm okay. just saying that the abundance of tax drives people away because it's expensive. You're saying we need people from out of state in order to fill the football stadium. So isn't that antithetical in terms of the way they're thinking? And I'm talking politically here. Right. Not necessarily my opinion because I but, don't know. Well, it's economic and no one really knows for sure. Right. Personally, I would not come or I'd try to avoid hotels that have the $20 resort fee or the 4% fee. It's 35. Oh, it's 35, excuse me now. I would, not, I would not go to these places. Personally, right. I think right. it's outrageous. It is outrageous. But if you're addicted to gambling, or let's face it, a lot of people here are on the free junkets, and right. they don't pay anything. If they don't pay anything, they don't care. Steve, thanks very much. Once again, great analysis, and we'll have you next time. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm Jeff Barton, your host for the Las Vegas Real Estate Show. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.